What's up everybody? It's the Common Sense of Bus coming at you with another video. And in this video, we're going to talk about the perspective some more, giving you the facts so that you can understand from this point on in the play, when I tell y'all why I believe something, you will understand because you will have the same facts I have, all right? Now, in the perspectives here, it says, limitation of liability and indemnification of directors and officers. That's a pretty big old chunk of a sentence, huh? What that means is, this is what you can and cannot sue the board members for in their personal capacity. You can't sue Adam Aaron, Philip Lauder, Kathleen Paulus for certain things. They are not held liable for, we're going to get into that, but before we do, let me show y'all something. You see this? To that some business talking homework? This is the Oxford Handbook of Fiduciary, all right? And I had to buy this motherfucker because while I was doing research on my city group claim, all right, and it was dealing with fiduciary duties, violations, I had to know what they all were quoting. I had to know exactly what a fiduciary duty was according to the law and according to established precedent. So I bought this. And there's three types of fiduciary duties, people. There's the duty of care, the duty of accounting, and the duty of loyalty. All right, that's what this teaches you. And you got to figure out which one of these fiduciary duties have been violated. And if they violate it, can you sue them for it? And that's what this paragraph right here in the prospectus says. As permitted by the DGCL, we, AMC, have adopted provisions in the Certificate of Incorporation that limit or eliminate the personal liability of our directors for monetary damages. All right, it means you can't sue them for monetary damages. For a breach of of their fiduciary duty of care. Now, if you're going to understand what that means, you got to understand what the duty of care means, all right? And duty of care means that they do what they do for the best interest of the company and the shareholders. And if they do actions that are contrary to the best interest of the company or contrary to the best interest of the shareholders, you cannot sue them for the fiduciary duty of care violation. They've got provisions that protect them from that. But now it goes on. The director of care generally requires that when acting on behalf of the corporation, directors and officers exercise an informed business judgment based on all material information reasonably available to them. All right? Which means, simply put, the reason you can't sue them is they're just basically making decisions that run this company with the best information that they have at the time. Consequently, a director will not be personally liable to us or our shareholders. What does that mean? That means like Philip Lauder. It means the CFO, uh, Sean Goodman. All right? He cannot be held responsible to AMC or its shareholders for monetary damages, for breach of fiduciary duty as a director, except for the liability for any breach of the person's duty of loyalty to us, AMC, and our shareholders. Okay? So now, you have a condition here that says, if we make bad decisions and it's against best interest of the shareholders, you can't sue us for that. But, if you could prove a violation of of the fiduciary duty of loyalty, they can be sued. And that's what this whole lawsuit against 
uh, Citigroup is about. It's about their duty of loyalty to the company that they represented on a world market when they created the BDRs. That's this. Don't worry. I've knocked the dust off that motherfucker. It's coming. Now, here's the problem. Is these phrases like fiduciary duty violations get thrown around a lot. And I've just showed y'all now that there are different fiduciary duties and they can be sued for some and they cannot be sued for others. So it's important not to just say that Adam Aaron and the board are committing violations of fiduciary duty. You have to distinguish, is the fiduciary duty a duty of care? Because if it is, you can't sue them for that. Okay? And if it's a violation of the duty of loyalty, then you can. And there's a difference. And it's a slight difference. It's not very much of a difference, but it all deals with motivation. Let's listen to what the whoop-ass legal team leader says when I ask it to tell me the difference between the duty of care and the duty of loyalty. Let's listen. In corporate law, the duties of care and loyalty are fundamental fiduciary responsibilities owed by directors and officers to the corporation and its shareholders. Here's a straightforward breakdown. One, duty of care. This duty requires directors and officers to make decisions with the level of care that a reasonably prudent person would use in a similar position and under similar circumstances. It means they must exercise, gather all pertinent information, and thoughtfully consider the best interests of the corporation before making decisions. The duty of care is about the process of decision-making, ensuring that directors and officers act on an informed basis with the belief that their decisions are in the best interests of the corporation. Two, duty of loyalty. The duty of loyalty demands that directors and officers put the interests of the corporation and its shareholders above their own personal interests. They must avoid conflicts of interest, self-dealing, or any action where they could personally benefit at the expense of the corporation. The duty of loyalty is about aligning directors and officers' actions with the interests of the corporation and ensuring they do not exploit their personal gain. In essence, while the duty of care focuses on how decisions are made, emphasizing diligence and prudence, the duty of loyalty is concerned with the motivation behind decisions, insisting on fidelity to the corporation's interests over personal gain. Both duties are essential for maintaining trust between shareholders and those who manage the corporation, and breaches of these duties can lead to legal consequences, including liability for damages. So, the duty of care is basically their corporate governance decision making. For example, if the CEO and the board wanted to buy into a gold mine because they thought it was a good investment according to the information that they had at the time, if the investment is a flop, then it would not be a violation of their duty of care because they made a corporate decision based on the available information that they had at the time. However, if the directors enter into the investment because of personal gain, if that's the motivation behind the investment in a gold mine, then that would be a violation of the Exactly? You've got it. The duty of care is indeed about the quality and process of decision-making in corporate governance, ensuring decisions are made with diligence and prudence based on available information. If the CEO and the board decide to invest in a gold mine based on thorough research and genuine belief that it's in the best interest of the company, even if the investment later turns out to be unsuccessful, this would not typically be seen as a breach of the duty of care. Their actions would be assessed under the business judgment rule, which is a presumption in favor of the directors and officers, assuming they acted on an informed basis, in good faith, and with the honest belief that the action taken was in the company's best interest. On the other hand, 
the duty of loyalty is focused on the director's and officer's motivations and conflicts of interest. If they enter into the investment primarily for personal gain, for example, if they had undisclosed personal interests in the gold mine, that would indeed constitute a violation of their duty of loyalty to the corporation. The duty of loyalty requires them to avoid conflicts of interest and ensures that any business opportunity they pursue is in the best interest of the company and its shareholders, not their personal enrichment. So, you can't sue Adam Aaron for making a bad decision on Highcroft. But what you can bring an allegation against is their duty of loyalty as to the motivation behind the investment. So see, it's all how you praise shit, and it's very important. That's why I got this when I got it, so that I would know when I'm talking about Citigroup in this lawsuit, all right, that I'm getting the right fiduciary duty violation down, all right? They owed AMC a fiduciary duty of loyalty. Now, they broke both, but they can't be held accountable but for one. So these are the facts, people. This is not conspiracy theory, all right? And if it's a theory, I will tell you it's my theory. But when it's based in fact, it's based in fact. Just like this over here. I had to dust it off. And I'm going to read to you in the next video some testimony here. And I want you to tell me who it was that was given this testimony. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Love y'all. Be blessed.